Ant Keepers, and welcome back to the Myantix YouTube channel. Today we'll be walking through the Campanatus Chronicles, Part 3, talking about our Campanatus Castanus being given a large amount of Campanatus Distipians brood and hoping that it'll be a change for the better to push them forward into maturity quicker and so they can get a better handle on life and hopefully move forward from there with their own species. Sadly, this is not what happened. Matter of fact, I don't know what happened. I am baffled, dumbfounded, totally confused, and part three has really not been coming out because I'm totally lost in the matter. Maybe one of you has an insight on exactly what's going on in their vortex nest, but as I walk you through exactly what happened one more time, maybe you'll either come to an answer that you can share in the comments or be just as confused as me because there's a lot going on and it's just chaotic to see exactly what's happening in the nest with them. Secondly, before we go into it, I had a couple emails wondering how they can help my antics grow. In the past, we've talked about donating to my antics, and that's not necessarily where we are anymore. If you would like to help my antics, please go to our website, find something cool on the shop that you think would be beneficial to your ants, like a my antics starter kit, which you now have in green, yellow, and purple pink. We also have colored honey in sets of four, or you could buy a single one with a queen or a colony for our United States ant keepers. And that's how you can help out. It would be amazing if you would join the process, bring home something special from my antics, and right now as we speak we have a new demo of a completely unseen nest being made, constructed, and demoed in the next couple of days. We've set it for a while, but this time we finally have a solid, solid new design that I think I'm going to be very happy with that might even one-up the stockade and vortex nest all together. Let's go see what these little buggers have been putting me through. Ah uh, yes, here we are, calmly in the outworld of the Campanatus Castanus. Here we see one of their workers piling up some of the uh, debris and trash that I will eventually move out of their nest and get out of their way so they can continue to bring garbage out or back in for this instance and we'll just be all happy, merry, and content. Or will we? I'd like to show you what I've been staring at since the Campanatus Chronicles Part 2. It started out small and I thought it might be a coincidence but now, I am just totally lost. Let's take a look at exactly what the case is. Jeez all my, please say it ain't so. What the heck is going on in here? Now you may be looking at this firsthand and being like, well, it looks like this colony has a serious amount of drones and even a couple princesses which will be flying in the next year. Well, sure, that's a great way of bringing it around circle. Though, here's the issue. We gave our Campanatus Castanus queen a large amount of brood that came from a young colony that had a queen die. 
The colony had no elates or princesses in it at the time of that, let alone a massive amount that came out of nowhere. Besides this, the colony at the time of the Queen's demise was only about a year and a few months old. She may have pushed so many eggs out that she died from it, but whatever the case may be, I know firsthand that that colony was not at the point where they would be having drones and princesses entering the case. Now, if we can quickly think about our uh, the Avengers real fast. The Avengers being the biggest colony in the Miantic's ant room and the closest to being first moved into a 50 gallon aquarium, maybe bigger, maybe smaller, it all depends on time and where we are at that point, but regardless, you would expect them, this colony here that has literally a whole stockade's nest in back, which is around four times bigger than the single vortex nest, they also have two outworlds at their disposal and two vortex nests on the bottom, you would think that they would be the first colony to have a late and do the whole nuptial flight scene in general. But, for some reason, when we peek in at them, though the colonies are massively condensed in numbers, there is not a single drone or princess to be seen, not anywhere in the whole Avengers colony. This theory may be a little weird to ponder upon, but let me give you my two cents on exactly what I believe may have happened here. Queens have a lot of pheromones that they deal with. They're almost like a insect chemist, which many insects are in the ant world, and it's just another reason why they're so admirable. I believe when we brought in these, uh, the mature brood, the eggs, the, uh, the pupa, the larvae, the cocoons, uh, etc., I believe they came in with the full intention of being workers and majors. I believe that this colony somehow, some way, figured out how to chemically change the structure of these uh, mat uh, mature pupa and larva. Now if you remember back to the Campanatus Chronicles Part 1, all that we had hatching were workers, majors, and even super majors. I don't care what you guys say, Campanatus definitely have super majors. There's three different individual sizes. There's the worker, the major, and then the super majors. They're literally as big as the queen, right? Anyways, back to what I was saying. I believe after all of the cocoons hatched, she somehow changed them into drones and princesses. Now this is not confirmed, but with the research that I have done, ants are very capable of controlling what, what they consider their nest and all of the brood and larva in it. My theory suggests that she played a huge part in why an explosion of drones are now creeping over all of the mature brood and cocoons along with other workers in this nest. Now don't get me wrong, I've been studying them for the last few weeks. This isn't something I just woke up to and walked upon. It started happening gradually, and it started happening along with other of, uh, of the workers hatching as well. In the meantime, she has continuously been laying her own eggs, though if you know anything about Campanatus in general, or Campanatus castanus to be specific, they are very, very grow slowers. Slow growers, there we go. So I believe this, not only has she continued to work on her own brood, but somehow she found it beneficial to maybe get rid of this alien species out of her nest. And what's the easiest way to push away ants you don't want being in your nest? Have them fly away and up your flights. Blah, 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 blah. Interesting. Ants never cease to amaze. In conclusion, no matter what happens, we're going to continue to care for them with the best possible care we can give them. If the queen wants more drones, more space maybe, perhaps she did this on purpose and when the next spring and summer comes, I'll be sure to personally find a way to make sure that all of those drones and queen, if still alive, will find a way out into the wild. But this has to make you think. Do queens really have the power to change brood once they are laid, hatched? 
Do queens have the power to chemically restructure the brood that was supposed to be workers into wings and, and princesses? It's a little bit mind-boggling, and uh, I, I kind of held off making this video because of that. But in this case, it's interesting, and I'm glad that you guys are along for the ride to really find out what exactly is going to happen next, and when the heck she's going to start hatching her Campanatus Castanus brood again. Because that's going to be the most exciting part when we finally go, hmm, look at that, she finally did it, right? Ba-boom. I love all you guys, thank you so much, and have a wonderful, wonderful morning, noon, or night whatever it is in your local time. Peace.